Hello everyone, this is Abhay Sharma for thinkingpenguin.com and welcome to another animation notes tutorial. Today we are going to take a look at expressions and scripts. But let me tell you this first, I have no idea about how these two notes exactly work in animation notes because unfortunately there is no official manual available yet. Yes, I do have some basic knowledge and yes, I will push you in the right direction but expressions and scripts need some prerequisites. Python scripting. First you should learn some basics of Python, its modules, Blender's Python API, then you should learn what module works with animation nodes and what not. But don't worry, even if you do not know anything about Python scripting, you can still use basic expressions like arithmetic operators or trigonometric operators, etc. And that is exactly what I'm going to do in this tutorial. So why we need expressions? Well, in some cases it's faster and less confusing. But it's limited, you have very less space to work with and limited to only one output. Expression node does not have any invoke subprogram so you can use it directly. By default output is set to generic but you can change it to whatever you want. You can add multiple inputs but these inputs does not hold any value so you have to connect them with proper data to make it work. I encourage you to go to the Python's manual webpage and see some mathematical functions. I'm going to use arithmetic and trigonometric functions in this tutorial. But before that let me show you a simple technique I used to do in After Effects in 2007 when I was learning expressions which was rotating an object without rotating the object. So let's create a object transform output node, select our cube. Create a math node, change the mode to sign, add a time info node. Let's duplicate it and change the mode to cosine. Now we have to combine these two float values in a vector. So let's create a combined vector node. Leave the z value to 0. Let's connect it with our object transform. Play the timeline and now you can see it's rotating around the grid axis. Now I want to control the frequency and amplitude of the animation. So let's add another math node, change the mode to multiply and insert it in between. Turn down the value to reduce the frequency. We can also add another math node here to control the amplitude or radius. Let's create a float value node to control both math nodes value. Now what we are going to do is we are going to convert this node tree into expression. I'm going to write a vector which can hold three values x, y and z, right? Let's see the output. Okay, let's add an input. You can either create it with the plus button or just simply drag and drop from the required data type to the new input connector. Disconnect it and let's rename it to time. Now, let's change the first vector value to math.sign of time and second value to math.cos of time. If I connect it with the time node, you can see it starts spitting magical numbers. Let's uh, create an input for frequency and one more for amplitude. Then I will multiply it with my expression. You need to know where you should put the multipliers in the expression. Okay, as I said earlier, expression inputs are just for references, basically to use it inside the expression. They don't hold any value. Let's connect it with proper inputs. Let's change the label to make it more sensible. Now we are ready, but before that, let's explicitly define the output type to vector. And it says automatic type correction, which I have no idea what does it mean. Let's connect it and start working. 
so this is how you use an expression node let's do the same thing with script node let's create it from the sub program menu there are lots of advantages of script node like it has unlimited number of outputs and input connectors it is written in a text editor so you have lot of space to work with in my opinion it is one of the most useful node in the animation nodes if you know python scripting you can easily extend the animation nodes for reference you can definitely go to the blender's python api manual website and take a look there are some limitation here and there like not every module work with animation nodes but it could change in future anyway let's start adding inputs and outputs let's create a vector output we have to create a text file so just hit the plus button here i will change one of my viewport to text editor select our script file okay to use a script node you need to create the invoke sub program when we create the invoke sub program it activates the script let's change the label to whatever you want let's create an object transform output node and select our cube if i see the output of the invoke sub program it's a vector i'm going to change the name of the output so that it does not conflict with reserved keywords okay the script node pause is not defined so basically if your script has any problem it will appear here okay let's define pause I'm going to initiate it with 0 0 Let's add inputs. I'm going to create three float inputs for time, frequency and amplitude. Let's also add a boolean input just for fun. Rename it. Let's write our script. You can see it's essentially the same as expression. Let's move it from here to inside a condition. Basically, if the active button is on, then it will run the following code. Make sure it's properly indented. It's one of the thing with Python you have to look out for. Let's finally assign the uh, values to pause. Script node has an error. It says math is not defined. Well, math is a module in Python, so let's import it. Okay, now we are ready to use our output node. First we have to create a time info node. Connect it to the time input. Play the timeline. All right, it's working. Let's change the frequency and amplitude. Okay, let's connect it with the object transform. All right, that's the uh, that's the script node. You can duplicate it however many times you want and it will work independently. Let's test the act switch. It's working fine. All right guys, I think that's it for this tutorial. You should definitely check out the Blender's Python API. Very useful. All right, if you like this video then please subscribe, like, share or comment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.